TCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today, I will be discussing about prothrombin complex and reversal of anticoagulation. So, uh, if a patient presents with multi, uh, different types of bleeding, so there are different grades of bleeding, it can be grade 1, that is minor bleeding after a trauma or a drug inje injection. Grade 2 bleeding, that can be because of bruising, ecchymosis, minor wounds, oral bleeds, uh, epistaxis or uh, heavy menstrual bleed. And grade 3 bleeding is bleeding into the joints, that is hemarthrosis, IC bleed, GI bleed or umbilical cord bleeding. So, patients might present with different types of bleeding and when we are evaluating a patient with bleeding, uh, we will be checking the complete blood count including the hemoglobin, the platelets and all. So, uh, platelet, normal platelet count is 1.5 to 4 lakhs and uh, we will be checking uh, for the, if at all the platelet count is less, we will be checking for the uh, uh, blood count, manual platelet counting through peripheral blood smear. It will tell about the morphology and size of platelet and it will also uh, tell about the uh, other parameters hemoglobin if, if there is any microcytic hypochromic anemia like that then we will do the bleeding time bleeding time is normally less than nine minutes then uh, we will be doing the coagulation parameters that means the uh, prothrombin time prothrombin time usually will check the extrinsic pathway and also the common pathway so, uh, the prothrombin time will be uh, high, that means normal is 11 to 14 seconds and it will be increased in case of deficiency of factor 2, 5, 7, 9, 10 and um, we will be checking the INR. Usually, INR values, uh, that is the ratio of the control and uh, test prothrombin and uh, normally the INR is 0.8 to 1.2 and if that is also elevated, that means there is some deficiency of clotting factors. Then APTT. APTT usually checks the intrinsic pathway and common pathway and the normal value is 25 to 40 seconds. Then we will check the thrombin time. Thrombin time usually comes into account in case of the uh, common pathway and uh, it will be elevated in case of disorder of fibrinogen. Um, and the normal thrombin time is 10 to 15 seconds. So here we will be mainly concentrating on the anticoagulation, I mean the coagulation pathway, not the primary pathway. Uh, what is happening is suppose a patient is bleeding, there will be a primary hemostasis and the secondary hemostasis. So for the primary hemostasis, the platelets will be used up and for the secondary hemostasis, the clotting factors uh, comes into play. So uh, there are many bleeding disorders. It can be either inherited or acquired. So, inherited bleeding disorders are Haemophilia A, Haemophilia B and von Willebrand's disease. So, uh, what is Haemophilia A? Haemophilia A is the deficiency of factor 8. Haemophilia B is the deficiency of factor uh, 9, that is, it is known as a Christmas disease. Then, we have the deficiency of von Willebrand factor. So, von Willebrand factor is uh, will help in addition of the platelets and the factor 8. So, if that is uh, deficient, that also will cause um, disorders in clotting. And there are some acquired bleeding disorders. Uh, these are DIC, that is disseminated intravascular uh, coagulation. Then, uh, trauma. In case of trauma, the uh, many clotting factors will get used up and there will be a dilution of blood. So, that can cause again bleeding and there will be associated hypothermia and acidosis in bleeding. So, uh, sorry, in trauma. So, uh, that also can cause bleeding. That is a good cause of bleeding. Then liver diseases. So, in, if the liver is involved, uh, the vitamin K uh, dependent clotting factor production will be affected. And in case of uremia, uremia it's, uh, can also affect the functioning of the von Willebrand factor and that can cause bleeding. And uh, complications secondary to the drugs. Patient might be on any anticoagulation and or, or any thrombolytic drugs. So that can also cause bleeding. Then other drugs which can cause uh, bleeding are NSAIDs, uh, drugs like ranitidin, statins, etc. Uh, coming to the specifically to the vitamin K antagonist, that means uh, we all know that vitamin K reduce clotting factor 2, 7, 9 and 10 and it will also produce protein C and protein S uh, also. 
so uh, in case of vitamin k antagonist we are using vitamin k antagonist as a part of anticoagulation therapy uh, especially in cases of uh, if, in, if the patient is taking some um, uh, if the patient is having some prosthetic heart valves or if the patient is having af history if the patient is having pvod apla syndrome recurrent mi such patients will be on vitamin k antagonists like warfarin so um, uh, such patients we will be targeting mostly an inr between 2 and 3 so um, if this patient presents with bleeding we will have to reverse this um, anticoagulation effect so how will we reverse that so if the patient presents with an elevated inr uh, suppose uh, we are targeting an inr between 2 to 3 and the patient comes with an elevated inr and uh, just imagine the patient doesn't have bleeding at present so uh, suppose the patient's INR is between 3.5 and 5, we will skip the dose of warfarin and we will be monitoring the INR till the INR comes in the uh, target range. Or if the patient is presenting between INR 5 and 9, what we will be doing is we will omit one or two doses of warfarin and after that we uh, if this patient in between that if the patient is being frosted for some urgent procedure or something we can be supplement with vitamin K. Uh, vitamin K can be given as 2.5 to 5 mg can be given and if, if required additional doses can be given for uh, every 24 hours. And if the suppose uh, this patient is presenting with an INR more than 9. So we are imagining uh, these patients as uh, presenting with an abnormal INR but there is no bleeding manifestations. Okay. So uh, if the INR is more than 9 we will hold the warfarin. We will give vitamin K 5 mg to 10 mg and then we will be monitoring the INR. Suppose these patients are bleeding. So if there is a major bleeding and if we want to reverse this, we will be holding the warfarin. We will be giving a, um, vitamin K. We will be uh, hospitalizing the patient according to the need and uh, we will be giving the anti, uh, reversal of anticoagulation. So for reversal of anticoagulation, we have the uh, four-factor PCC. Now I will be discussing about that later. That is the prothrombin complex complex concentrate or it is uh, usually known as a human prothrombin complex. So that can be given to the patient in a dose of 25 to 50 units per kg. Uh, uh, IV it can be given rapidly over 10 to 15 minutes. And we will be supplementing vitamin K as I told before. And if we don't have this, we can uh, reverse this anticoagulation by giving FFPs. So uh, usually we will be uh, in hospital settings, in rural settings and all, we will be only having FFP. So uh, we, we, we usually we will be giving um, FFP to these patients. So I will be discussing the advantage of this four-factor PCC and over FFP late in the later slides. Um, or if some uh, in uh, now we have newer oral anticoagulation agents. So uh, that means the direct. 2A inhibitors and the direct 10A inhibitors we will be having. So, um, direct 2A inhibitors are dabigatran, direct 10A inhibitors we have the uh, rivaroxaban, apixaban and all. So, if these patients come uh, presents with bleeding complications, we should assess the severity of bleeding. We have to check for the um, complete blood count, we, uh, LFTs, RFTs. We have to check whether the patient is having any liver failure or a re a renal failure which, which caused this bleeding. And then if, if we are not getting anything, then it might be because of the drug itself. So in that case, we have to reverse the effect of these drugs. So first we have to evaluate the site of bleed. If at all it is a minor bleed and all, we can give some local compression. We can transfuse with blood products according to the need. Um, and if it is a severe bleeding, we have to withhold this newer anticoagulation agent. Then uh, we will have to uh, consider surgery after uh, reversing the anticoagulation agent then we have to transfuse blood products uh, then uh, if the patient has taken uh, some dabigatran or rivaroxaban in the last two hours we can uh, plan on uh, placing an RT and giving activated charcoal also but that itself is having a risk of bleeding and we can give the reversal agent that means dabigatran for dabigatran we can give idarusimab or that is the praxibind and in case of uh, rivaroxaban or apixaban we can give the uh, andesan alpha that that is the reversal agent of this and then uh, we can consider giving antifibrinolytic therapy like tranexamic acid and we can um, for reversal of this uh, anticoagulation we can give uh, the bl blood products like ffp or the uh, four factor pcc 
and uh, even da uh, di uh, dabigatran is a dialysable drug so even dialysis also can be considered so uh, so when we are discussing uh, if we are confused whether to give ffp or four factor pcc so uh, first we will talk why four factor pcc is preferred over ffp so uh, the disadvantage of ffp is that uh, it requires an abo cross matching and the dose requirement is high per kg dose is 15 to 20 mg per kg and there is a risk of transfusion associated cardiopulmonary overload uh, infusion reaction and acute lung injury and the patient will be uh, if the patient is uh, having a renal failure uh, cardiovascular abnormalities and all patient will be going to a pulmonary edema condition so uh, so uh, there comes the importance of the four factor pcc so how what is four factor pcc i told uh, it's already it is prothrombin concentrate complex or the human prothrombin complex so uh, it is actually derived from ffp so from ffp uh, they will derive cryo precipitate and a cryo free plasma fractions and from these cryo free uh, plasma fractions they will derive the four factor pcc that means a prothrombin complex concentrate and um, then from this we can again derive the single factor concentrates also so four factors four factors means it is two seven nine and ten and factor seven is having very uh, short half life so sometimes it can get lost so um, it is uh, we can derive three factor pcc also and it contains two uh, instead of seven we have two nine and ten and uh, previously this four factor pcc was used for hemophilia b that means deficiency of factor 9 but now the american college of chest Physici uh, physicians recommend pcc as a first line treatment for uh, anticoagulation uh, instead of ffp so the advantage of this uh, prothrombin complex uh, uh, concentrate is it has a higher level of clotting factors approximately 25 times that of ffp and it can rapidly uh, normalize the INR uh, within about 30 minutes and uh, only less volume is required suppose if we are uh, transfusing a patient with FFP in 25 to uh, 15 to 20 mg per kg, um, ml per kg then it might be around 1 liter might be required but in case of uh, 4 factor PCC only 100 ml might be required so there is a very low risk for fluid overload and there is no need of any uh, cross matching blood grouping and cross matching and there there is a very low risk of transfusion reaction also and uh, how will we uh, uh, how is it available so uh, it is available as a uh, free sterile freeze dried powder and it is viral inactivated using solvents detergents and pasteurization and various filtration process as we, uh, it will undergo then it will, and it is available as a freeze dried product and we will have to reconstitute it and we, have, we will have to give, administer to the patient uh, it is administered via intravenous route and it will contain as i told 2 7 9 10 it will also contain protein c protein s and heparin also heparin is to prevent uh, the clotting of these clotting factors so um, the researchers uh, found that four factor pcc uh, is an effective alternative to plasma for urgent reversal of vitamin k dependent anticoagulation therapy in major bleeding and it is acceptable um, for its safety profile with as compared with plasma and um, uh, some studies have been undergone con comparing the four factor pcc and the three factor pcc and it was found that there is no difference in uh, mortality or in uh, reducing the inr or in the length of hospital stay and the risk of thromboembolism also is also similar for four factor pcc and three factor pcc and the major indications uh, is for the treatment of peri uh, treatment and perioperative prophylaxis of acquired and congenital deficiency of vitamin k dependent coagulation factors and coming to the dosage dosage if suppose uh, we have a patient with an inr of 2 between 2 and 4 uh, the preferred dose per kg is 25 units per kg um, that if, if it is a uh, 100 kg male the dose will be coming as 2500 international units and if the INR is between 4 to 6, 6 the dose is 35 units per kg uh, that means 3500 in a 100 kg male and if the INR is more than 6 the dose is 50 units per kg that means uh, 5000 international units for a 100 kg male 
and uh, it can uh, produce uh, it can uh, uh, hemostasis will be achieved within 30 minutes and along with that we will have to supplement with vitamin k also and the root i told before is iv root and uh, we, uh, it is since it is available as a freeze dried powder we have to reconstitute it after reconstitution you we will have to look whether there is a uh, any particulate matter or any discoloration uh, after reconstitution or any precipitants clouding or any gel uh, in that then using aseptic precautions and syringe filters we will have to administer to the patient rapidly over 15 to 10 to 15 minutes and when we are administering we have to be very careful that means if while administering if any blood clots enter back to the syringe if there is any backflow or something the product can get coagulated so uh, it sh we should be very careful in administering this and uh, the effect will come within 30 minutes and the safety and efficacy in children is not well established so it is we only prefer it for adults coming to the disadvantages of this uh, four factor pcc is the cost factors so uh, one vial itself will contain um, it, while one vial will be containing only 250 international units so and that will uh, cost about 14000 rupees so if we want it to administer to administer 2500 and all um, that will come as uh, around 1.4 lakhs might be required and the other risk is the risk of thrombosis as i told if any uh, blood uh, backflow or something happens the entire product can get damaged and uh, there will be high risk of clotting and thrombosis so these are the disadvantages of this four factor pcc thank you